Hey, hey, Callan. How, Callan, how you doing? I'm doing well, James. How are you? I'm doing good. Just as the uh, just as the timer cut off, my uh, earphone fell out of my ear. So pardon me while I shove this thing back in. Anyway, I wanted to welcome everybody that's uh, joined us and the ones that are going to be joining us in the replay. Um, today we have uh, Colin Ward with us. He's a Florida-based photographer. Um, we're going to be having a conversation about Colin's photography work and uh, his processes. We're going to go through some of his images. And we just want to welcome Colin. Um, so Colin, um, why don't you give us a little brief background about uh, yourself and your photography? Okay, thanks, Jim. Um, I'm glad that you invited me to do this, and I'm glad to be here. Um, I think we met through a Facebook group called Models Photographers Networking Events of Florida. I believe that's where we first met, but anyway, we, we both participate in that, and um, um, we've had a lot of fun shooting together, and I'm looking forward to going through uh, some of my photos to, with you, everybody. And uh, I'm primarily going to be uh, showing portraiture, but I do want to give you just a brief history of uh, how long I've been doing this and where I started from and that kind of thing. Okay, sounds good. Okay. So do you want to pull up the first picture? Yeah, let's uh, cut over here to this screen. And I think I've got this uh, out of order right this second, so bear with me one second. And I will... There we go. Yeah, there we go, that's it. Okay. So, I, uh, I grew up in England and uh, lived there until I was 14. And uh, when I was seven, I was put. I was given a uh, box camera, Kodak box camera, and I started shooting. And um, well, I shouldn't say shooting. I started taking a few pictures, and this is very possibly one of the first ones I took. And it's horrible in terms of focus and so forth. But I still like the subject matter, which is the dog and cat we had at the <laughs> time looking at the fireplace. Um, so anyway, that was. Uh, a long, long time ago, and um, so I, I've had a long history uh, as, a, as a photographer, but I've never done it for a living. It's always been more or less a hobby or a, a, maybe a side gig, if you want to call it that. So that was uh, from my box camera, and if you go to the next one, you'll see that I improved a little bit and took a couple of horses. Uh, on a place called Chorleywood Common, which again is not too far from London. And by that time I had started developing my own film in a dark room, or actually a bathroom, and uh, making contact prints. So I got a pretty early start uh, do doing that. Uh, I'm not sure how old I was when, when this was taken, but probably in the neighborhood of 10 years old. And uh, then at some point I'm still in England, I got my first uh, 35 millimeter camera, which was uh, a big step in the right direction. And as as I got older, I eventually moved up into uh, a Nikon Nikomat and took a, a college course in uh, photography. And if you go to the next uh, slide, you'll see that. I got considerably better. This is one of my first portraits. That's my dad. Um, and this is after we had left England and moved to Ohio. And that was uh, a shot that I took with the Nikomat. And um, I believe, it's, it's been a long time ago, I don't really remember, but I believe I developed and printed the film at that point. And um, uh, continued uh, after the a college course to, to improve a little bit and um, then I went on to start shooting slides and for many years uh, I would shoot slides in the 35 millimeter Nikomat and um, until digital came along. So go ahead Jim, let's see what's next. Okay. So <clears throat> 
This is uh, a project I've been doing during COVID um, and being stuck at home was uh, getting my slides out, which were still in uh, slide trays and uh, digitizing them. So I spent hours doing that and now I pretty much have them all done at this point. So this is what a scanned slide looks like. This is my wife, um, probably from the 80s, not quite sure what year that was. But uh, the slides actually scan pretty well and I was pretty happy to get that done and now I've got um, most of those slides on my hard drive so I can look at them or print them and what have, or what have you. And the next couple of shots um, show a, a trip. Uh, this was in California. I, I worked for a company that was based in California, so I was out there quite a lot. And um, this slide and the next couple were from a visit out there at some point. So I think uh, you can see that the slides translated pretty well to so, um, not, digital not to, files. Go ahead, Jim. Not to interrupt you there, but um, I mean, it, it's interesting you're doing that project because I'm doing the very same thing too. Because um, oh. I, I, I follow the same course that you've taken with uh, photography, shooting black and white, doing my own developing and printing, and then moving into color slides uh, probably through the 70s, 80s, and actually all the way into the 90s. So I'm scanning a lot of my old stuff too. Uh, what, uh, just a technical question, uh, what scanner do you use for your slides? It's called a Plustech um, Optifilm 8100. And um, it does a good job, but it's very slow. It's mm. very, very slow. And it does one slide at a time. Yeah. And if I was to, to do it again, I might get a flatbed scanner that was high quality and, and do several at a time. Yeah. But I would do it, uh, I'd be multitasking. I'd stick the slide in and, and start it up, let it let it do its thing while I'm doing something else, right. and then switch it out for another one. Right. So with hundreds of slides, it, it did take a long time, but it, it's not like I could, had to sit there and not do anything else in the meantime. Yeah, exactly. Uh, do you want me to move to the next slide? Yeah, I think there's another one of the California slides there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was... I'm not much of a street photographer, but if I see an opportunity to catch a shot like that, uh, that was uh, in uh, on Fisherman's Wharf, near Fisherman's Wharf. I'm not sure if that guy's really a fisherman, but he looked like <laughs> one, so I took a picture of him. Yeah, he looked for you. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, go ahead to the next slide, if you would. Okay. So I mentioned a kind of a history of my cameras. I, I've got a lot of cameras and went through the point and shoot uh, digitals and so forth. But the one on the left there is my Agfa Silette, which was the 35 millimeter camera I got in England. Um, Agfas were popular there. They were made in Germany. And, uh, you could get them in England pretty easily. Yeah. And uh, it, it still works. I still, it's, that's, I just took that picture the other day. So that um, Agfa is still with me and it, it still shoots. Um, reasonably well. Um, the camera that's next to it is the Nikomat, which again, I, I got that um, about the time I went to college, I believe. And um, it still works. I, st I have film in it right now, and it, uh, it's, it's a really good camera. It's like a Nikon F. It's the same thing, except it doesn't have interchangeable viewfinders or what have you. Okay. And then when, when I got serious about uh, digital photography, I, I jumped in with the Fujifilm X-T1, which is the next camera there that you see. I see, Jim, you're wearing a Fujifilm shirt, so we're, we're the Fujifilm team members. <laughs> um, that X, X-T1 XT, there has a Leica lens on it. I've been using it to play with and adapt different lenses to and what have you. So that's my kind of fun playing around camera. And then I upgraded to the camera on the right, which is the my current number one, that's my Fujifilm X-T3. And um, the vast majority of the serious photographs that you're gonna be seeing in a few minutes uh, came from that camera. 
and, and some from the XT1 as well. Okay. So um, I'm I'm real happy with the Fuji films, and um, I have quite a stack of uh, lenses and what have you to go to go with it. And um, I, I I imagine many of the audience members are photographers, so that I thought they might have some interest in the gear that I'm using. So I thought I'd throw that up. Very good. I'll move on. Yep. There we go. So this picture shows a uh, small bus that belongs to a company in uh, Dunedin, Florida. And the picture on the side is one that I took with the X-T3. It was a commercial job that I uh, got from the company that owns, owns this place. And uh, if you're ever wondering how big a print you can make from something like a Fujifilm X-T3, there's an example, that one, uh, the specifications called for it to be eight feet high and 14 feet wide. And it's just a single shot. It's not a panorama or anything. And uh, it blew up very well. And uh, you see the same picture on the other side of the bus and on the back. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I'm proud to say that my photograph is uh, driving around town and uh, for, for all to see, although my name is not on it, of course. <laughs> but anyway, it, uh, it, you know, even if you get up close to the bus, it still, it still looks pretty good. So yeah. um, that's, that's what 26 megapixels looks like, uh, eight feet high and 14 feet wide. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead. Okay. Okay, I, I've, I've put together a few shots here that um, I've taken recently with film, or fairly recently with film. I still mess about with film. It's it's more of a hobby than anything else. And um, this first shot is medium format, actually, and it's a triple exposure in the camera. There's no Photoshop involved. It's uh, the camera that I was using allows you to wind the shutter back up and take another exposure without winding on the film. So um, these are in my backyard. There's two different close-up flower shots and then a a, uh, a further back flower shot combined together in the camera. And I, I, I kind of like that. That's um, kind of uh, makes you stop and think a little bit. Yeah, that's cool. So uh, go on to the next one, if you would. Okay, this is the one we saw a minute at the beginning. This is uh, another film shot. And I was at an event where I was uh, shooting some models and this particular shot was taken with uh, a little um, Pentax 35 millimeter camera on FP4 film. And um, I, th I thought it came out well. There, there were several other shots similar to that. And, um, you know, in black and white uh, film does a good job. And uh, sometimes in color, not always. And this, I believe, believe there are a couple more film shots here. You want to move on? Okay. Yeah, this is, um, I was in Las Vegas uh, for a conference a few months ago, and this is uh, another uh, film shot on Kodak Ektar film. And uh, this little train monorail runs people around Las Vegas, and uh, I was anxious to get a good shot of it. And I took some digital shots, and then I had a little film camera in my pocket, and I t took this one, which I thought came out uh, pretty well. and. It's, it's sharp and clear, and I like the colors on it. Yeah. And this, I think this is the last film shot I took. I, again, I was at an event um, with some models, and uh, I pulled out this, the same little point-and-shoot film camera and uh, shot this one in black and white. I believe that's also on FP4 film. And uh, it's kind of grainy, It's uh, but it, it gives it character, and... I think it looks nice, and when I, I look at it on my 27-inch uh, computer screen, and look looks cool. I like it. So. It almost looks. But like I, I wouldn't want to have to shoot. <coughs> Excuse me. It almost looks like a movie uh, poster. Yeah, yeah. Well, the models were good, you know, and, and a lot of the shoots that I do uh, um, feature models that you'll be seeing, and. Um, a lot, a lot of the credit for the uh, 
photo itself and the posing and so forth goes to the models and the photographer can capture what what they do but um they, sure. they play a large part in in uh, getting a decent photo so um what do we got next we have okay Tati this is uh, tatiana tatiana um <laughs> I mentioned earlier the Facebook group that Jim and I belong to, and um, the organizer of that is is named uh, Vocourt Barrelhouse, if I'm pronouncing that right, online. So if you see that group, and that, he, he's the uh, founder of it, but he organized a great shoot in Melbourne, Florida, and that's where this was taken. Tatiana uh, Andre is the subject there, and uh, she was walking around outside with that uh, outfit on, the red hat, red gloves, and, and green uh, hair tie, or whatever it is, part of the hat maybe. And there was a sunbeam shining on the wall with some texture behind it that was really a, a pretty well-defined sunbeam. It, it had come through some uh, gaps in the building. <clears throat> so I, shot, I got her to go and stand in it like that and uh, took the shot and uh, I thought that that's kind of one that to me has a lot of impact and I really I really like it pretty well so I'm, I'm into my um, early early session of the portraits I'm going to show you a lot of portraits but this these are some that I think have some impact and one thing I like to do with uh, my photographs is make them stand out from the crowd you know there are there are millions of photographs online and all around us these days because everybody has a cell phone that takes decent photos. Mm -hmm. So you really need something that has impact that makes somebody stop and look and pause. Hopefully they pause for a minute and uh, enjoy it. So that's uh, what I go for. And that's that one there's, I think has impact. Yeah, it really does. It, uh, so, you know, actually I thought you may have, uh, you may have lit this one yourself. I didn't realize that that was actually a, a natural light coming in through there, but that's that's phenomenal image. Yeah, it's. Um, I didn't add any light at all to that one. Let me go to the next one. Yep. Okay, <laughs> this is a, a model friend from Tampa, and um, I think there are a couple of shots of her here. She's got a very... Uh, a, a face and, and, a, and a look that is uh, that also has a lot of impact. Needless to say, the red hair and the freckles are uh, important. Yeah. And um, I got close in with that one, and um, I, I, to me, it looks it looks appealing. So I, I hope everybody else likes it. And here's another one of uh, of her. Her name's Savannah, and. Um, no, we're not in a European castle or anything of that kind. Um, this this door is on the front of a bar in St. Pete. And um, we were there when the, uh, I believe it was a Sunday morning, when the bar was closed and the door was looking like that. And, you know, it's, it's a no-brainer when you see something like that to take advantage of it and pose the model and uh, get the door with it. Are you so adding, that's the story of the. Are you adding light to this one, uh, or is this natural? Yes. Light coming in? No, I. Um, I usually, when I shoot outdoors, I'm usually uh, this kind of photograph anyway. I'm usually using uh, some flash and some ambient light. Hmm. I, I combine ambient light and, and flash, and usually my uh, intent is to um, make the ambient light portion of the photo about a stop darker than you would really want it to be and then use the flash to light the model or the, whatever the subject is um, perfectly and that way this the model or the subject uh, pops out more because she is brighter yeah. and your eye your eye always travels to the brightest and sharpest spots in the photograph and um, what I typically do is I'll make sure, even in post-production, if I didn't do it well in, in the field, I'll, I'll brighten the model and darken the background and uh, 
also do some sharpening on the uh, on the model or the subject mm -hmm. uh, and leave the background unsharpened yeah. so that's that's kind of how I get some of the impact in the digital darkroom now do you use uh, Lightroom uh, what else was you Photoshop or do you just uh, concentrate on Lightroom I, I use Lightroom um, on everything and I use the Lightroom um, filing systems and um, if I need to do something in Photoshop I'll transfer the file from from Lightroom to Photoshop and then back again and I'll save it in, uh, save it from Lightroom yeah so that's that that's my process and um, I uh, took a course from Scott Kelby at one point mm -hmm. about Lightroom and he, he taught us how to use their filing system and I can at this point I've been doing that for a few years and if if I want to find a particular file a particular shot that I took say three or four years ago I can go right in there and, and find it almost immediately yeah. whereas before that I was doing the uh, file by date system mm -hmm. and of course after a year or so has gone by you have no idea what date you took a particular photo so right. so this Lightroom system works out way better for me yeah yeah Lightroom is amazing as far as this cataloging and stuff goes right uh, this is another portrait shot um, I didn't use any flash on this one this was uh, hard light uh, straight from the Sun and that is uh, actually the uh, when I went to Utah and was shooting by the Great Salt Lake and that is the Great Salt Lake that you see in the background there okay and uh, um, the girl is draped by a, uh, a piece of lacy fabric and um, didn't do much to it in post-processing except color grade it a little bit mm -hmm. I like I like the color grading you put on that one too. And here's another another um, portrait shot. This is Rachel and um, Gordon Moore and I went downtown to St. Pete to shoot Rachel one evening. And uh, before we really got started, I saw the sun on the on the building behind her, and she was there standing around and. I said, hey, stand there in front of that golden glow and let's see what, what we get. And uh, that was the result, and, the, and I kind of like that. Um, I believe that's the moon up on the in the right corner. Yeah, I just noticed that. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not something you that jumps out at you that you would really notice. But um, anyway, that's how that came about. And um, we went on to shoot some street scenes. Uh, as it got dark, and uh, I believe there's one coming up, or certainly in the in the show somewhere. Go ahead, Jim. Okay. Okay, it, it's not next; it's later. Again, this was in Utah. Um, I like to shoot uh, fine art nudes, uh, beautiful um, figure in the landscape type shots. Uh, we didn't put any nude nudes in the show tonight because it's on Facebook and they don't appreciate that for some reason but anyway this one here is um, from that shoot and as you can see she's pretty much covered up but this is this features backlight on the model this the Sun is uh, getting ready to go down behind the mountains there and it's like the Sun's lighting up her hair and um, I don't think I used a flash on this this is this is just natural light and tweaked in Lightroom a little bit Okay. And a little bit of lens flare there, I believe, too. Go ahead. We'll go to the next one. Yep. Yeah. And from the same shoot, this is also in Utah. And uh, this is Emma. She is um, hiding in the grass, I guess, hiding in the long grass. And um, to me, that's a, um, a shot I like a lot. Okay, go on to the next one. Okay. Okay. I seem to have uh, left out a couple of things I was going to put in, but um, 
I'll, I'll mention some influences in, in a few minutes. But this is uh, the beginning of a section I'm, I'm sh where I'm showing dancers. I enjoy shooting uh, ballerinas and uh, other kinds of dancers. And this was one of the first ballerina shots, well, the first ballerina shot I did. And I wanted to do it on the street. I don't know whether anybody is familiar with a guy named Jordan Matter. He's published a couple of books about dancers, and some of them, they're really all on the street as well, but in New York. Uh, his books are pretty entertaining, and um, I decided I would try that in St. Pete. So I contacted uh, the local ballet school, which is not far from my house, and asked if there was a ballerina who might like to get her photo taken. So um, Brianna here uh, was the result of that. And we met downtown in uh, St. Pete on a Sunday morning when it wasn't too busy, and. Uh, started shooting around the uh, Museum of Fine Arts and in the street and alleys and so forth. And that's that's one of them. So why don't you move on and let's see what else. Uh, oh, that's, that's another shot of uh, Rihanna. And I think we got another one coming up. Yeah, that's okay. There she is in front of the uh, Museum of Fine Arts. And um, I believe that's all of her. Yeah. Now let's. let's uh, uh, okay. Some yeah, I've got a couple of um, shots that I took in my own studio. I have a studio that I set up and break down on my enclosed patio, and um, this young lady's name is Kelsey, and she's been a dancer for. I believe she said 13 years, and uh, Gordon Moore and I were shooting her and uh, her yoga partner, and I got her to do some dance moves in the studio. My studio is really not big enough to do much in the way of jumping and that kind of thing, but she was able to uh, do this in front of the background, and uh, I was happy with the way that turned out. And uh, I was shooting against a white background, which is uh, I tweaked to make uh, yellow. So that's Kelsey. And uh, what else do we have here? Looks like this uh, is Sam. Sam, yeah. Yep, that's Sam. This is at um, one of uh, Eric's shoots again. We. We were able to shoot in a, in a high-end studio in Orlando not too long ago, and they had a very large cyclorama wall in the back, which is basically a, a, a long white wall and a white floor that um, fit together with a curved surface so that there's really not a, an edge to be seen. And um, I was able to, sh to place a light at each end of the of the uh, floor there, and uh, Sam was uh, has been a gymnast for years and years, and she hadn't done it too much lately, but uh, she really got it together and did some great jumps for me. And um, the flash, the two flashes were like a sandwich, so they uh, make her pop out from the background real well. And um, I, I captured quite a few of Sam in motion, and she has some, some fantastic uh, looks. I believe there's another one after this one. I think it's a little further on one oh. for, for Sam. Okay, that, that, there's another one coming up. Yeah. This is another d dancer, a friend called Irina, and, and I went to shoot a couple of dancers in Igor City. Um, this is Emily. She's a dance major at uh, the University of Tampa. And as you can see, she's on the sidewalk and I, I used a flash for this shot, capture her and the rest of the shot is pretty much uh, out of focus. And uh, But I, I captured the, uh, froze, froze the action, I thought pretty well. And um, I really like that shot of Emily. 
Yeah. And the next, the next shot is the other dancer who was with us that day. And um, let's see, her name's Natasha. And we were shooting in an alley in Ybor, and, um, and lo and behold, a chicken came along and joined us. And I, I, I thought, uh, I thought that made the shot interesting. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Natasha is also a, a dance major at uh, the University of Tampa. I know there's a place at Park over there in Ybor that has all those chickens that run around loose in there. Right. <laughs> yeah, the, the rail. The, we weren't far from a railroad track that the Amtrak train goes by on, and there were chickens all over the place around that area. Yeah, and uh, they roam freely. I suppose they find plenty to eat from the, yeah. from the stuff thrown out from restaurants and what have you. Okay, what's next? This back on the cyclorama wall. Uh, this is Yassi. She's. Uh, doing some moves for me too and um, you, I was using uh, what's called second curtain flash for any of you photographers you might want to duplicate something like that where she's the ambient light illustrates her motion but the flash captures her stationary freezes freezes Freeze. her in place yeah, yeah. That's pretty so, cool. So, um, yeah, thank you. And again, some more dancers on the street. This is uh, an intersection in St. Petersburg that's been painted. The, the whole intersection's painted multicolors. And um, we went out and shot her. She's more of a modern dancer, not a ballerina. Shot her in several different spots and. Uh, I like the one that just shows the traffic lights and the and the regular street. Nothing, nothing fancy, but we uh, had a flash with us to freeze her and and make her pop uh, pop out from the background. And let's see what's next. Okay, there she is again, and um, we we in in Saint Petersburg we have a post office that uh, is outdoors, at least some of it's outdoors, and that passageway behind her uh, has mailboxes that people go, you know, rent and have keys for and so forth, and it's, it's all outdoors, except it's under this archway, which I think is, is one of the more attractive buildings in St. Pete, and they call it the outdoor post office. Okay. And um, captured her doing a great jump in front of it. Uh, go ahead. Sam again. Oh, there's Sam again. Uh, again, we're back in the big studio with the uh, cyclorama wall. And uh, Sam's doing another great move. I was using the same lighting setup that I mentioned before. And uh, I gave the white wall a little pink treatment to get this shot. And uh, uh, Sam did a great job. And I think that... Um, I think that has impact. That's that's something I like about it. Yeah. Now the tri the, the pink is in post, right? Yes. Because yeah, I don't I was yes. there, I don't remember you having gels at the time, so. No, I I didn't. It was shot shot with, with the background white. Are we getting any questions in, Jim? Uh, none so far. Let me see if anyone does any, anyone have any questions. We're monitoring the um, Facebook, uh, so we could answer any questions that anybody would have. Um, so pop them in there if you've got any. None so far though, Colin. Okay. Well, some of the things I like, um, um, I, I keep saying impact, but I also like telling a story. And I also um, think that it's important to be able to see what you want to shoot. If you're just walking around, you know, you, you see shadows, you see um, sunlight, you see backlighting on flowers, you, you can see all kinds of things if you just start paying attention. And uh, I've learned to do that uh, as a photographer over the years. And um, that doesn't really pertain to this shot here at all, but um, 
once again, this uh, we're back at Green Gables, and Eric, uh, our, the organizer of our group, um, brought this wonderful bathtub, and um, I decided to place the leg in in a vertical position, not show the rest of the of the owner, and then I uh, added a couple of other shots of the leg to show some motion. So um, that's my leg in a bathtub shot. So you blended those in uh, Photoshop? Yes, I did. Yes. Actually, uh, for the photographers, I had the camera on a tripod so it wouldn't move and mm -hmm. shot the same shot with the leg in three different places right. and um, combined the shots, basically. Um, I'm going to do some, show you some more Photoshop work in, in a few few more slides okay. that are kind of like that, but, but different. Okay, uh, another Green Gable shot. This is a portrait of um, Haley or Ophelia. And um, it was kind of an old, uh, slightly run down sort of place. And I, I like the story here. Uh, the sto I leave the story up to your imagination, but here's this girl dressed in kind of unusual, old style clothes on a bed with no mattress and uh, no curtains, just kind of plain Jane shot. So I, I think there's a story there, but it's up to the viewer to interpret it how they wish. Mm -hmm. What's next? Uh, same place, also Green Gables. Um, Yassi was there and um, she's wearing some really bright reds and I, I just love the way they popped against the uh, color of the cabinets in the kitchen. So we had her pose again to, uh, a story type shot where she's looking in that cabinet for something but we don't know what it is so hopefully the viewer will see that and cat, the red will catch his eye and he'll wonder what she's looking for in there. Mm. Go ahead. And uh, Jim and I were talking about this uh, shot uh, just before we started here today. And again, this is uh, in, the, in Green Gables. And uh, somebody brought two uh, pythons. I guess those are pythons. Or co um, I think they're pythons, right? Anyway, so. snakes. Snakes. Very big snakes. <laughs> I, I personally do not like snakes. I am not a snake person or herpetologist. Um, but I did get brave enough to go in the room and shoot, shoot some photos, and um, I thought the girl here, the model, Haley, was uh, very, very brave to let that snake crawl around her like that, but it makes a good photo, I think. <laughs> uh, here's, here's another action shot. This is a friend of mine uh, named Ashley who lives in St. Pete. She's, She's kind of a go-to model because she's uh, she lives close and she loves to shoot. So uh, this is an action shot. I actually have a camera that's uh, waterproof, which is a good thing. When we went out and did some splashes in the in the bay, and you can't really see Ashley very well, but um, we we certainly captured the uh, captured the droplets of water pretty well. Is that a film camera or is it digital? No, it's it's digital. It's a it's called a Nikon AW1. Okay. And um, I I don't use it a whole lot, but it sure it's a good camera and it sure comes in handy when it's time to get wet. Yeah. Uh, here's another shot of Ashley. She's an artist, and um, she's very creative. And we were shooting in my studio with the black background and uh, she decided to paint her hands and she had brought some paint with her and uh, there you are. That's, yeah. uh, that's a real creative that's, picture. Uh, yeah, I think that I like that one too. Yeah. And this one, this is another Ashley who also lives uh, near me in St. Pete. This shot was taken, this is kind of a figure in the landscape shot. Um, this is on the new St. Petersburg Pier, 
we we met at the pier and uh, took a walk around and took a bunch of shots. And um, I just like the uh, the forms of the of the con it's very concrete, by the way. Um, but I thought that looked good, and uh, I'm, I'm not sure how big the screen is that everybody's looking at this on. But on a big screen, uh, she looks really good. Yeah. And uh, it's it's just a a nice piece of piece of uh, I don't know what exactly you'd call it, but uh, bigger in the landscape, I guess. Yeah. So I'm going to change uh, direction here a little bit. Um, I do travel and go on vacation and things like that and take my camera with me. And um, I, tr I try to take some portraits when I'm doing that. Um, I thought this shot um, was worthy of, of showing everybody. These, these two musicians were in Mexico playing this uh, ancient, I guess you could, I would call it a marimba. I don't know what they call it down there. But it sounded great. Um, they could play all kinds of stock songs on it. And um, I, I think it I think the photo shows the uh, aging hands pretty well and the aging the aging marimba. Yeah. That does have a story behind it. Yeah. Again in Mexico this is a a real fisherman mending his nets in his boat while he's having a cigarette. Uh, he was tied up on the beach, and uh, I like the colors here, the color of the boat and the color of the sea and his hat and everything uh, kind of goes together well. The, the, the outboard motor is a little ugly, but <laughs> <laughs> so be it. Yeah, couldn't have him take it <laughs> off. <laughs> no, that was kind of tough. Uh, this shot is, uh, again, a, obviously a travel shot. This was uh, um, in Maine. Bar Harbor, Maine is where that was, I believe. I just saw these dinghies, and they just looked pretty. And I waited for the sun to get in the right position and grabbed a shot of them. Yeah, I was going to say that, that uh, it looks like it's a, like an evening shot or an early morning shot with the sun reflecting off the water. Yeah. Yeah, it had actually been raining, so there was there was kind of a clip one of those days where it turns orange and gets cloudy. Okay, yeah. 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 And this is another uh, shot actually leaving Bar Harbor on a boat, on a ship. And um, you can see the fog hanging over the islands in the background and the red sails in the sunset coming mm -hmm. towards us. So that shot was actually published in Shadow Magazine uh, a few months ago. It's, uh, yeah, fog in the background with the mountains sticking out of the top. It's uh, pretty cool looking. Yeah. I, uh, I, oh, I, I mentioned when we travel, I like to get some portraiture yeah. going. In. This, this particular shot was in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and this policeman was, uh, there, there was supposed to be some sort of demonstration going on and where we were, and he was there to protect us from the demonstration. We never did see any demonstrators, but he was nice enough to let me take a nice photo of him. <laughs> and this is a bartender hard at work in Cuba, that's in Havana. Hmm. And um, I, I wanted to go to Cuba before it became too commercialized. And I had signed up to go to Cuba on a photography trip about two, two years ago. And uh, unfortunately, the trip was canceled because it didn't get quite enough, in, enough people signed up for it. So I was real disappointed that I didn't get to go. And then um, I noticed online somewhere that um, there was a cruise ship leaving out of Tampa, which is half an hour from where I live, and it was the first stop was going to, well, the second stop actually was going to be Havana. Hmm. I thought, well, if we take this cruise, I've ne I had never been on a cruise ship before, I thought, well, we'll, we'll take this cruise and at least I get to spend the day in Havana. Yeah. So we did, and it was 
it was much better than I anticipated the cruise to be. It uh, was really easy to drive to Tampa, park the car, get on the ship, and let somebody else do the rest of the driving. Yeah. And when we were in Havana, we got to see a lot of cool sights. And uh, this uh, bar with the red light and the bartender and everything was uh, one of the things I brought back with me. I'll go ahead. Yeah. And this one. Yeah. Uh, m most people have heard about the old American cars in Cuba. Right. And... Um, the nice ones like this one are mostly being used as taxis these days. If you get away from downtown Havana, you'll you'll see some old cruddy American cars that are, that are still operating. But there are some really beautiful ones. This this being an example of it, and I'm sure I don't know that for sure that that was a taxi there, but I, I bet money on it. And I just happened to see the the shirt of the same color in the background. <laughs> yeah. um, <clears throat> I'm going to show you some Photoshop work. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I spent two hours talking to a person yesterday, and I haven't been talking to people since COVID, <clears throat> and it made me hoarse. But anyway, um, th there was a show put on in Tampa two or three years ago called Dark Arts, and photographers and other people and artists were invited to submit work to the Dark Arts show, and so I, I did that. I decided to jump in and, and make some Dark Arts photos, and uh, this one is, is one of them. This is uh, Christina from Orlando, and um, the technique used was kind of like the one with the legs in the bathtub. Mm -hmm. In other words, I took the photo of Christina squatted down in front of this couch, and um, then I had her get on the other side of the couch and took photos of her arms, including the dagger, at a number of different places, and then combined them in uh, Photoshop and uh, added the smoking effect in the background. That, that took a fair amount of work, I might add. Yeah, I imagine. A fair amount did. of time. Yeah. But it was fun. I, I enjoyed doing it. This is another one of Christina. Um, she was posed and looked uh, almost like a zombie, I guess, with this uh, teddy bear. And um, I added some texture to make it look uh, grungy and added, added that to my dark art collection. Go ahead. Okay. And here's another uh, another shot at uh, a dark arts photo. This is uh, Tiffany French, and um, the techniques are much the same. Tiffany standing behind the couch with a sword in her hand, and then she posed on the couch in different positions, and I I again shot the photos with the, on a tripod and then combined them in Photoshop and uh, kind of made the made the cuts a little gorier than they would have been otherwise. Hey, Colin, we've got a couple of questions that popped up. I've been kind of neglecting the, the feed over here, but uh, if you got a okay. second with that uh, kind of break there, we'll, uh, let's see, we have, uh, uh, Victor asked, how do you get your inspiration for shooting with new models? With new models? Uh, N-E-W, new. New models. Um, well, I, I spend a lot of time looking at um, work on online, you know, like uh, Pinterest, and um, I, I get an idea like... Um, you know, a, a shot. Let, let's do a shot in an alley or something like that. And I'll I'll line up a model and I'll tell her what we're going to do. And um, we go out there and kind of have an idea in the back of our head, but we don't necessarily know exactly what's going to be there until we get there. And then we start looking around and opening our eyes and and trying to figure out um, what a good spot would be to shoot. 
And um, again, I, I'll go back to the shots that you saw of the ballerina at downtown St. Petersburg. I knew that the Museum of Fine Arts had this spectacular front with the columns and that kind of thing. So I said, let's meet there and then we'll walk around and see what else we can find. So um, I, w I wanted the ballerina shots in front of something sort of dramatic. And um, so I picked a place that I knew would be dramatic. And then, and then once we got there and started shooting, then we walked up an alleyway and we found some, the, the sun was really bright and, and uh, unfiltered. And so we shot some shots, with, took some shots with some really dark shadows there. But they weren't planned. We didn't know that was going to happen when we got there. It was sort of, you'd kind of have to go out there and, and open your eyes and see what's around and what you can make work. Yeah. So I, I start out with a, a degree of, of planning, try to set up the location and the per, and a suitable person, you know, for whatever the shoot's going to be, and then uh, go there and wing it, <laughs> I guess is the best way to put it. Now, I have two other questions. Actually, these came from my wife. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, okay. Let's see. Okay. She was saying, uh, is it always in your mind when you uh, do a shoot as far as the story? Uh, more so now than before. I've, I've leaned um, uh, toward that direction. I, I look for certain things. Um, I like to make the ordinary extraordinary. I like to come up with some sort of storyline and I'm planning a shoot uh, on a train coming up not too long from now and I know I want the model to sit by the train window on the inside and look kind of like she's sad, running away, you know, getting out of town, whatever. I, I know that much about it but, and that, again the rest of it will be when we get there. Um, So one of my other sayings is don't be boring. So I try to tell a story that's um, it's going to make you think, but uh, but not be the same old thing that everybody else is shooting, or else it, or else the photos won't stand out at all. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And so yes. the answer the answer to your wife's question is kind of um, I I hope so. I try to. <laughs> <laughs> And the second part of the question she had was, uh, what, what, uh, what's been your favorite uh, travel place to shoot? Mexico. Um, there's, there's, I didn't put too many of the Mexico shots in this show, but um, I went to Mexico last year with a small group. It was an organized tour. And um, we went to Mer Merida, flew to Merida, and uh, stayed in a small town called Izamal and then went out each day to different locations. We went to several haciendas, to some cenotes, um, shot some in the city. We were, we were there for the Day of the Dead, so we were there in the evening for the parade and, and the band and that kind of thing. And it was just great. It was, it was so different from what I expected. Oh, we also shot in a lagoon where um, flamingos are just all over the place. I guess they go there for the, for the season. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to go back this year, but uh, with the travel being the way it is, I'm not sure going to Mexico is a good idea. So yeah, uh, I may maybe try it again next year. But I definitely yeah. like that. Merida is a real nice city. It's uh, clean and reasonably modern and safe. Hmm. Okay, we'll go back to your slides here. Okay, um, this is a, a, a shot in my studio. My studio doesn't have any big columns in it, unfortunately, but the, the models and the, and the items in the foreground were shot in the studio, and the chair and the seat, it's a stone seat, that the one model is sitting on. And uh, it was, the, the idea was a Greek, or Roman, Ro Greco Roman. <laughs> Can you hear that thunder? It's thundering bad. I did. I heard that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, the models uh, were posing as Greco-Romans, okay. and um, uh, I photoshopped in the uh, columns and background from uh, 
don't tell anybody but from how he mentioned <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's uh, where the scene came from here's another photoshop i i, I mentioned um doing some uh bodybuilder shops uh, mm -hmm. shots and i'm going to show you a couple of bodybuilder shots that i've done recently <laughs> and um this was again shot in my studio with uh, what they call um, panda lighting, which is lights from either side to, to um, show up the muscular structure. And um, it was shot on a back on a plain background. And then the other shot I took in uh, Tropicana Field a couple of years ago, and I used Photoshop to plop him. Jason, Jason is his name, to plop Jason down in front of the uh, seats there. And here's another bodybuilder shot. I'm, um, I have a, a, a relationship with this gym in Tampa, which is mostly focused on bodybuilders. And um, our plan is to do quite a bit of the bodybuilder work. So if anybody uh, knows of a bodybuilder who wants some shots um, and doesn't have a place to shoot them, which I guess is quite a problem, um, let them haven't talked to me and we'll work something out. Uh, go ahead. Now uh, this is another one of Jason uh, in the same gym. It's called the Forge. It's in it's in Tampa, on the, kind of on the south side. Uh, go ahead. Here's some pinup shots. Um, this is Megan. She's an actress from California, but she she was in town to act at the Free Fall Theatre here in St. Pete. And uh, she came over and we shot uh, some pinup shots in my studio. I think I've seen that camera uh, a couple, at one of our shoots that, that we did. Here. Yeah. Yeah, it actually works. It's a, it's an old graph like no speed graphic huh. um, reporter type camera. Yeah. It does work, but it's very cumbersome to use, very hard to use to get in focus and what have you. But, it, but anyway, it makes a great problem. This one kind of makes me think of Rosie the Riveter, although um, if you look up close, you find <laughs> the colors aren't really right, but um, it's, it's a cute shot. Meg Megan's a very good model. And then this is back in Utah. Um, we toured Utah for several days, and um, these girls are wearing what they call prairie dresses, which... I never, I never knew what a prairie dress was, um, really. But um, we stumbled across. We were driving through this uh, plain, I guess you call it, and there were those uh, donkeys in the background who were wild, which were wild. And so we posed the girls with the donkeys in the background. And this is uh, Megan. This is a different Megan. She's posed uh, on the beach, if you if you want to call it a beach, at the Great Salt Lake, right outside Salt Lake City. And um, there's a string of these posts that go from the shore all the way out, probably half a mile anyway, to the water. Hmm. And I don't know what they were. They were evidently a dock or a walkway or something like that at one point. But as you can see, they're pretty rustic at this at this moment. Yeah. But um, anyway, I like Megan's uh, look there. And she's wearing the prairie dress again, and uh, her face is in shadow, but um, it has some atmosphere, I think. And this one is in Las Vegas, near Las Vegas, actually. It's a dry lake bed. And um, I went out there, uh, the publishers of Shutter Magazine, which I mentioned before, um, throw a, a bash periodically, uh, put on a, um, a conference, and one of the days was everybody went out to the desert to shoot photos. And of course, that's really why I went to the conference. I wanted to do the desert shots. Yeah. And the owner of, <clears throat> one of the owners of the business that puts it on, owns this Mustang. And uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure if the girl, wore the red dress because she knew the Mustang was going to be there or what, but it just, uh, it worked. So yeah. I, I got the photo. Uh, same shoot. 
this um, photo uh, ended up on the inside of a magazine, inside cover of a magazine. And uh, the space around it, fortunately, gave them a place to put their uh, credits for their uh, editor and publisher and all that stuff. <clears throat> and um, again, the the models on this this event were uh, kind of over the top in terms of clothing, but um, I, I really liked it. <clears throat> these were these were shot with natural light. I had a flash with me, but I didn't use it. Okay, we're back to uh, Tampa Bay with this this one. This is um, Desiree. Probably some of you know her. And that is um, Honeymoon Island. This was uh, one of the earlier shots of my model photography or portrait photography, if you will. Go ahead. Oh, there's a black and white of, of her, same location pretty much. And uh, I like the black and I like the black and white song. Um, that's okay. This is my friend Christina, who lives in Virginia. Um, she was shooting in Florida, and we were trying to come up with something a little different, and um, that's the result of, of that shot. Here's another shot in Mexico. This was um, not not the trip that I mentioned earlier, but this place is called Expuja. They have a way of saying Expu that I can't duplicate, but um, <laughs> yeah. it's a little tiny, tiny. It's between uh, Cancun and uh, the, the bigger town south of there. Um, but anyway, Expuja is just a little tiny resort on the beach. And it had this little shot there and uh, got this shot of the model with the shot in the background. Yeah. Uh, and this is Christina again, also, also in Mexico, posing with some hardware. And again, I'd, I'd like to mention that this is an example of where I use a slightly darker background, a little underexposed, and then uh, a brighter model. And uh, your eye, I think it's safe to say that your eye goes straight to the brighter point of the photo, and, and you see the model. Yeah. And then you, then your eye will look around, and you'll see the the hardware in the hardware store. Second, right. Go ahead. Um, couldn't resist this uh, this position. This was a stairway again in, in Tulum, Mexico, and. Um, I just like the uh, graphic shape of the stairway and planted the model there. Yeah, it well, lines lines lead you right to her, and you've got that green um, plant there. Yeah, very nice graphic. I always like this shot too. <laughs> this is um, <laughs> this is at a junkyard, needless to say, and well, I guess it's not needless, but. It is at a junkyard, and um, this is a school bus. This is where school buses go to die, I guess. <laughs> and uh, I grabbed that shot of her when I saw that come together. I like the go ahead, we, we can. Thunder clap. I'll I'll move a little faster. We're getting uh, we're, we're an hour into it now, so. I'll pick up the pace. This is um, again in the junkyard. This is Rachel, and we had smoke bombs with us. So uh, that's that's not fake smoke. That's real smoke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, her car broke down. She's uh, here, here's another guy. I, I don't have that many shots of guys, but um, again in the junk shop, uh, junkyard, I should say. Um, he's playing the part of a truck driver. Go ahead. I don't think those are uh, OSHA approved uh, footwear. <laughs> no, no, I don't think there's much OSHA approved around the junkyard anyway. Um, this is Eris, and uh, we went to Arcadia, Florida, because we that's kind of halfway between where we each live, and we um, um, 
found it where we knew there was an abandoned building there that was like an old gas station. And we posed a couple of shots uh, around the abandoned building. Kind of a juxtaposition of her, which, you know, she looks good and clean. And, uh, the building looks old and dumpy, so I, I like the contrast there. Yeah. Uh, go, go ahead. I think okay. there's another one of her. Yeah. yeah, there she is again. Same building, uh, looking out the broken windows with some uh, plants in the foreground. Uh, go ahead. Uh, it's Tiffany again. Uh, Flapper. Gatsby shoot. Uh, we talked about Rachel before shooting downtown at night. Gordon was with, with me that evening, and uh, there she is with some Christmas colored lighting. Yeah, I like those night shots like that. Uh, this is back in Mexico. I mentioned the flamingos and the flamingos. lagoon. And, uh, yeah, there's, there were a ton of them, but they, they wouldn't come very close. So <laughs> they're yeah. kind of off in the background. Uh, go ahead. There's just a few more. I think there's another one of uh, Olivia. That was Olivia we just saw, and this is Olivia on the beach in Mexico. And Megan back in the uh, Great Salt Lake. And this is the last shot. This is Emma. Emma at the Great, Log Great Salt Lake, too. With a lot of blues. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's very nice. Okay, so that's my show. Okay. Um, if, if, if for anybody who liked uh, that stuff, or if they want to see some of the actual nudes that we did, uh, you can check out my website, which is uh, scrolling by at the bottom of my screen. Hopefully it's uh, yours, but if, if you look at um, ColinWardPhotography.com, you'll see a bunch of different shoots. Some of the pictures that you've seen today will be on there. Yeah, so, so there you have it. We have uh, Colin's uh, social media and uh, website going across there, ColinWardPhotography.com is his website, and his Instagram is Colin underscore war, Ward underscore photography. And then on Facebook, he is also Colin Ward Photos. So give him a follow and check out some of his images that, uh, that are posted on these particular uh, sites. And Colin, I really appreciate you uh, coming on board to to go through this today. It's very interesting. Uh, like I say, I've followed your your photography uh, on social media, and you and I have been shooting at quite a few different events and everything. And it's always enjoyable to do that. And uh, this has been a very enjoyable time um, getting a little bit more information from you. Well, thanks, Jim, for having me, and thanks to anybody who's been watching and uh, stuck around. I appreciate it. And, okay, and uh, thank you very much. I think we got uh, one more. Let's see. Victor said, uh, how do you develop your image style? Very colorful. Victor Lopez. Ah. Um, I like poppy, poppy uh, saturated styles, mostly. I don't always do that, but um, um, it just what appealed to me. And uh, I would shoot with pretty contrasty lighting and um, a little tweak in uh, Lightroom to get the most out of the files. The Fujifilm has strong colors anyway, yeah. so it's not too difficult to do that. So if I, if I didn't want those kind of poppy colors, I'd be desaturating the photos from the way they came out of the camera. So um, a little bit of Lightroom work, just uh, boost your vibrance, really boost your vibrance and um, lower the hi highlights and bring up the shadows a bit and uh, your business. Yeah. Very good. Um, and I appreciate everybody that's been on here live uh, viewing us. And uh, I know there will be a lot of people that will come on and uh, watch the replay. Uh, if anybody out there, uh, photography wise, or, or uh, actually any of the models that work with us would like to do a showcase with me, uh, just reach out to me at James Kilgo Photography uh, on Facebook. Uh, send me a message and we can set something up. Colin, appreciate it. And uh, have a good evening and a great uh, what's it, Labor Day. Yeah, good Labor Day tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'll catch, catch you at the next shoot.
Thanks much. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.